Death Valley Days. Eureka! That's what Archimedes shouted as he ran naked from his bathtub to tell the king that he had found the test for specific gravity. But I found gold, pure gold. I panned it with my own hands and I saw it with my own eyes. Look at that, Sheriff. Look at it. Mr. Greeley picked his own spot, done it all by himself, never done it before in his life, and he come up with gold. Excuse me, gentlemen, but perhaps I should, as the saying goes, strike while the pan is hot, huh? <laughs> and the news of this shall go forth to all the world, at least as far as the New York Tribune can carry it. Did you hear that, Sheriff? Mr. Greeley gonna put it in his paper. Well, that's what you wanted, wasn't it? Not unless you satisfied yourself that I wouldn't promise in anything Colorado couldn't deliver. Oh, you proved your promise, Mr. Pollock. Get the buggy. Yes, sir. I'm going to say in my story, if you go west, young man, go to the Pikes Peak country and get there in a hurry if you want to be among the first. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine, Mr. Greeley. That's just fine. I wish I could throw words around the way you do. Oh, uh, you'd better stick to selling your mining claims and town lots. You'll get rich faster. <laughs> so, uh, uh, by the way, uh, Mr. Pollock, how much would you say this gold is worth in legal tender? Oh, that must be at least $200. I'll take it. You take it? I'll take the 200 <laughs> And I think I'll start my report. I made $200 in 20 minutes with no investment but a borrowed pan. That ought to sell a lot of mining claims for you, shouldn't it? <laughs> Well, we'd best be getting back to civilization. All right, at any rate, Denver City. <laughs> Some of your leading citizens? Oh, no, just drifters passing through. On their way to a gunfight. Now, don't you worry, Mr. Greeley. The sheriff here is going to take good care of it. Nobody troubles you. I'll fix you up a nice table in a quiet corner with your pens and ink and paper. And then while you write up your report, I'll get everything set to send it back east. I've hired a dozen express riders between here and Kansas City. Help, Mr. Greeley, sheriff. Hey, uh, Mr. Greeley. Anything else you need? Quiet! Quiet. Mr. Greeley's thing. Go right ahead, Mr. Greeley. Today with my own hand, saw it with my own eyes. In 20 minutes, I made two hundred dollars. That's fine, Mr. Greeley. Fine. Something wrong? If you don't mind, Mr. Pollock, I prefer the readers to wait until the paper comes out. No, 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 that's nothing to trouble yourself about, Mr. Greeley. Probably just somebody blown off steam. Probably struck gold just like you did. Mr. Greeley! Mr. Greeley! You 
wiggle that whip just once more, farmer, and I won't miss. Now, now, that's enough. You bet it's enough. No farmer's gonna lay a whip on me. Yet he coming to him. Him and them shooting their guns to scare my team. Seems to me like they was just having a little fun. Well, you tell me what's funny about it. I drove 40 miles from my farm to bring my crop to market. I ain't never heard of a farm in Colorado. Well, you heard one now. And I tell you, I'd rather break sod and plant seed and see something grow than to, than to dig for gold that ain't there anyhow. Where'd you get all them turkeys? I raised them. I figured there might be some decent folk here in Denver City who'd, who'd like to have a real back home Christmas turkey dinner. Hey. Hey, you're right, farmer. Yes, sir. You sure are right. yourself killed for a bunch of turkeys? And what are you going to do about it, Sheriff? Go on, Sheriff. Do something. So Mr. Greeley can write you up in his paper. Grab a hold of you, Sheriff. Come on. Now, some of you boys give us a hand here. Thank you, folks. Thank you. I appreciate it. You see, Mr. Greeley, uh, we don't even have a proper jail. Even if we did, we don't, uh, we don't have a judge to hear complaints. Even if anybody made a complaint? Oh, now, Mr. Greeley, you got to realize it ain't like back east. We, it takes time to get a town like this organized. That's where you come in. The sooner we get a lot of people settled out here, the sooner things won't be like this. Then these, these drifters will have to move on. In fact, that's probably just why they were showing off, just to give you the wrong impression. I'm competent for my own impressions. Oh, uh, Mr. Pollock, is it safe for me to go back in the saloon? Oh, now, Mr. Greeley, now why, sure it is. No, the boys won't bother you. They're just a wild bunch of boys. Just a just... wild bunch of boys having some fun. What's your name, mister? Wiley. Jacob Wiley. My name's Greeley. Where'd you hail from? Illinois, near Springfield. Springfield? That's where Abraham Lincoln practicing law. Who's he? You'll be hearing from him. Mr. Greeley, why'd I ever hang that badge on you? I wish you never had. Mr. Greeley! Wiley, take my advice and go on back where you're well off. I brought a crop to market and I'm entitled to be paid for it. Count yourself lucky you're alive and let it go at that. You ordering me to leave? Because if you are, you're going to have to back it up. From what I just saw over there, you ain't much at backing up that badge. Look here, Mr. Wiley. I feel sorry for you, in a way. It must make a man feel sick down inside when he knows that everybody knows how little of a man he is. I'll, I'll let that pass. Just remember, I gave you some good advice. I reckon from where you stand, you did. <laughs> Are you talking to me, farmer? 
I'm talking to all of you. Now, I'm a peaceable, law-abiding citizen, and I came into Denver City to sell the first crop I raised. But then, for no reason, but just to be ornery, you know Count Loafer scared my team, and you turned over my turkeys. That's too bad about your turkeys, farmer. You be quiet. Now, I didn't know that the only law they got in Denver City is a badge with nothing behind it. But if that's the way it is, well, then, I ain't breaking any laws, and I'm standing up for my rights. Because that's all I want to do is stand up for my rights, my lawful legal rights. And I hold you responsible for what my turkeys is worth to me. So now you and your friends, you dig down in Eugene's, and you pay me what you owe me. Any digging that's done, farmer, you're the man to do it. I don't want to have to use this on you. Somebody, somebody shoots him. It's a great case of self-defense. That right, Sheriff? I ask you a question, Sheriff. Get out of here. You heard the man. He's a law. <laughs> Shit too bad about him. His turkeys will be alive for Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> Well, the farmer should have known better. Yes, he should have known better. And so should I. Yeah. You're welcome to read this. Very welcome. Or better still, let me read it to you. Yes, there is gold in Colorado. But there is no law. No man's property, no man's life is safe in Denver City. Therefore, we beg the press generally to unite with the New York Tribune in warning the whole nation, stay out of Pikes Peak Country. Stay out of Pikes Peak Country? You're not going to print this. I make it my business to print the truth, Mr. Pollock. Now, look, Mr. Greeley, all right, naturally, the West is still a little wild. But any time you have, you have a gold strike, you've got to take the bad with the good. You're not being fair to the decent people in this town. Oh, and which ones are they? The ones who stole Mr. Wiley's turkeys? Or the ones who stood by while Wiley's murderers walked out of here laughing? Laughing at them, laughing at the sheriff, laughing at you? For your information, Mr. Pollock, I don't embark upon a personal fact-finding mission without a very good reason. I came to Colorado because I was bombarded by letters from people who came out here with high hopes and then changed the words painted on their wagons, Pike's Peak or Bust, to busted and disgusted because of what they found out here. What the town lots and mining claim promoters call Denver City is one short street wide with more thieves to the square inch than any other settlement on Earth. 90% of Pikes Peak population will steal anything from a counterfeit gold brick to a salted gold mine. And here's another. In eight months, only two gunfighters have been run out of town. The rest rule the roost. Fifteen murders since July. I found it hard to believe that any community founded by my fellow Americans would deserve such accusations until I saw what happened out there today. All right, Mr. Greeley, all right. Maybe we did pick the wrong man for sheriff. And you put all the blame on him? Well, you saw him quit and crawl twice in 10 minutes. I agree with Mr. Greeley. It's a terrible thing when a man takes pay for wearing a badge and then he's not man enough to back it up. And who backs up your sheriff? Oh, no, Mr. Pollock. The really terrible thing about this is that a decent, law-abiding citizen can be murdered while defending his own rights, and yours, and yours, and mine, and the rights of everybody in this country. I hope my readers will share my disgust 
when I tell them that not one person in Denver City will do one thing about it. But nobody can do anything about it, Mr. Grilly. You don't realize Bates and his gang hole up in that livery stable, and it's like a Ford. You couldn't get them out of there with a regiment. Where are you going? To see Ed Bates. You were right about me, Mr. Grilly. So is he. So is Ed Bates. I've walked scared ever since I put this thing on. And I'll walk scared going over there. But I'm through crawling on my belly. Come back here. You're not fooling anybody. He's crazy. He sounded pretty sane to me. Well, he can't go up against them gunslingers. Oh, come now, Mr. Pollock. Don't tell me it would bother you if another man is killed merely because some of the boys are having a little fun. Sheriff, come back here. Don't be no fool. Sheriff! You're in there. Ed Bates. I want the man that shot the farmer. You hear me? Send out the man that shot the farmer. Don't go in there, don't! The man that shot the farmer. That's all I want. Sounds like, uh, all you want is me. You're the one that did it. I'm the one. You heard me warn him not to lay his whip on me. Buckle your belt. Drop it. You unbuckle it, Sheriff. time I pulled iron since I've been sheriff. All that happens is I get my gun arm broke. I tried. I tried. Yes, sheriff, you tried. Some of you folks get him to a doctor. Oh, no. I did the best I could to stop him. Too bad that was the best you had to offer. to give yourself up.
Let's get out of here. back, but they will spread the word. Put that in your paper, Mr. Greeley. I'll be through this in just one minute. Don't take you longer than that. Because no matter what you put in there, there's more to put. For example? Well, you know that gold you found? Well, you didn't find it. I put it there. I salted that stream just to get you to give us some free advertising. Did you hear me? I said your gold strike was a fake. Is that supposed to be news? Oh, come on now. Don't tell me you knew that. Come on now, Mr. Pollock. Surely it must have occurred to you that I didn't get to be owner and editor of the world's greatest newspaper by being as much of a fool as I may look. But you said... I said I found gold, correct? Now, that gold had come from somewhere. I doubt you brought it out west with you. No, it come from mine I own up in Cripple Creek, but that don't change the fact. I have already written all the facts that matter. Yeah. Read it. Read it out loud, unless your battle wound may have weakened your usual voice. Yes. There is gold in Colorado. There is gold in the streams and in the rocks and in the land. But more important, it is in the people settled here. Today, because of a wagon load of turkeys, I had the honor of being present while they begun to build a city and a state. Someday, the United States will be proud of Colorado. Well, that's how the Great Turkey War was fought and won, by the first people's government in the Pikes Peak Gold Rush country. Two years later, Colorado became a territory. In 1876, Colorado became the 38th state in the Union. As for Horace Greeley, he has a living monument in Colorado, the thriving city of Greeley, named for him, not far from where he panned gold in 1859. Next week, another true story of how the West was won. See you then.